I know data scientists in India who make uh, four or five crores. I studied in a, in a very small engineering college and thankfully I got a very good gate rank, which was number two. I call data scientists the Sherlock Holmes of data. Again, it's not that you should have a four year degree where you have studied tons of mathematics. No, who have no technical background, mm -hmm. who have successfully gone into data science careers. Amazon doesn't care. Right. Whether you come from a Stanford or whether you come from IIT or whether you come from a small college. Some people say, hey, I will work for three months and I want a job at Fang. I don't care which college you come from. If you have skills, I'm willing to hire you. And we pay more than bank companies, by the way, for entry-level roles and also for senior roles. Hey everyone, welcome back to eLearning Village. I hope you guys are doing good and staying safe. So I am back with another amazing and really exciting podcast for all the data professionals and my lovely data community. So a few weeks back, I got a chance to visit Bangalore and there I also got a chance to meet the OG of data science and machine learning in India, Mr. Shrikant Verma. And today, you will be getting the crisp answer for most often asked question in the data science and machine learning engineering and Srikanth don't need any introduction his profile already speaks for him like someone who passed out from Indian Institute of Science became a part of first few members of Yahoo's team in India and then worked in Amazon for five years as a machine learning engineer and after that started the entrepreneur journey so please make sure you watch this podcast till the very end this podcast is highly highly recommended from my side he's highly experienced in the data science and machine learning and before starting the actual video make sure to like this video in the big numbers i have planned few more amazing podcasts on machine learning engineer and i will release those podcasts as soon as you will complete 3000 likes on this video and yes don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the notification icon for more amazing content related to data profiles so thank you so much shrikant for joining me on my podcast and honestly i'm very very much excited to have this discussion around the data science and machine learning but for the audience who are watching you for the very first time, can you give a short introduction about yourself and anything you want to share about your professional journey? Uh, first of all, thank you, Shashank, for uh, being with us today. And uh, uh, for all those who may not know, my name is Srikant Verma. I am one of the instructors at uh, Scalar for the data science and machine learning programs. And prior to this, I was a co-founder of a startup called Applied Roots for about four years or so, which got acquired by Scalar. And that's how I ended up being a core component or a part of the Scalar's DSML programs. And prior to pri prior to being uh, a co-founder of a startup, I was at Amazon for about five years, wow. uh, working uh, both in US and India, primarily on data science related yeah. problems. And prior to that, I was actually a startup co-founder building a computer vision startup. So most of my, most of my professional career has been uh, either building startups from ground up or building products from ground up. And I'm super excited that I'm getting to do that again at mm -hmm. Scalar, where we're building the whole data science program from ground up. Awesome, awesome. Such a fantastic journey. And uh, that's why I'm very much excited because on my channel, I've been getting questions around this data science ML part. Now it's your responsibility to watch this one till the very end because whatever you have asked me so far, I'm going to put those questions in front of Shrikant so that he can answer it. And his experience is something which will be really helpful for you to start your journey in data science. So Shrikan, next question, and this is the common, I ask this question to everyone. So Happy how 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 did you start your journey into the data science? Like, was it by choice or just a random decision? So in my undergraduate final year, again, just to be clear here, I studied in a, in a very small engineering college. I knew this because I was the first batch in my engineering college. <laughs> so in my BTEC final year, I started really liking this subject called AI, neural networks, uh, image processing, etc. And thankfully, I got a very good gate rank, which was number two. Awesome. And I ended up at Indian Institute of Science. I still remember the very first week at Indian Institute of Science, uh, which is again in Bangalore, where I, I went to a professor, Professor Chinojip, and I said, hey, I want to learn this thing called AI. Mm -hmm. And I, I heard that you're one of the best profs around here. He gave me a list of courses to take. Mm -hmm. So all this happened before data science and machine learning were popular. There were actually no jobs when I was yeah. interested in that field. It so happened that I got lucky. Mm -hmm. As soon as I graduated, Yahoo Labs came in for placements to an Institute of Science. Okay. And we were one of the very early people who joined Yahoo Labs as research engineers without having a PhD. <laughs> so it was a combination of luck, a little bit of, uh, little bit of interest in the subject, yeah. certainly, because uh, going through the grind of a lot of heavy mathematics at Institute of Science was never easy. Correct. But then we also got very lucky. 
Mm-hmm. Like uh, obviously, like you initiated that part. Like you showed that interest to reach out to your professor yes. and yes. know more about the AIML part. So this is amazing. Like let me know in the comment section because we all are into this this circle where we take some decisions very randomly, right? And mostly happens with the students. So anyone who has take that kind of decision, let me know in the comment section because for me, like moving into the data engineering was something. just i i got to know about it and then i showed my interest into it in my first company and that's how i moved it so i was definitely i uh, can relate with your story so you started with yahoo labs then founded a company metric labs then in amazon and then again founded a company applied roots and now working with scalar to empower the data science and ml community so in this journey right so which part was be more challenging for you and what was the phase which you liked the most So I would actually put it this way: at every stage, it was a learning experience. Mm-hmm. At Yahoo Labs, it was how different academia or a university is to a workplace, mm-hmm. right? I had to unlearn a lot of what I learned uh, at when building my first startup. We were phenomenal techies. We could build all the tech in the world, but we didn't know how to build for the world, how to sell it, how to market it. Mm-hmm. We had no such skills. So at Amazon, I I often tell people that at Amazon, I did my MBA. <laughs> because in those 5 years i learned to build products i was one of the earliest scientists in the advertising org okay i got to interact with very senior management on how key decisions in product design product building product showcasing are actually done to customers clients so that customer centricity of amazon literally became my ethos mm-hmm, cool. so i often tell people that at amazon i learned to do i did my mba at amazon mm-hmm. and then when i started the next startup we bootstrapped the whole thing we never raised any external capital and it was one hell of a journey i had five other co-founders work with me a phenomenal team so i would say that every stage has its challenges at scaler today our challenge is how do we empower as many people as possible as possible in an instructor led program with deep mentorship yeah. so every stage has its own challenges every stage teaches us new things at every stage we make mistakes mm-hmm. that's the beauty of it and we try to avoid that next stage exactly. so of all the things again there is always recency bias in our minds <laughs> So if I have to incorporate that recency bias, I would say Applied Roots had been a terrific journey. Okay. But even in the last four months, what we're building at Scaler is 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 terrific, and I see a huge uh, roadmap of what we can do and how we can impact the next generation of learners. Yeah, uh, I think that's the same thing audience is looking for, like uh, something very crisp thing should come into the data science domain so that they can learn. And I think that is the gap you are trying to fill as well, right, into this edtech domain. and data science ml everybody knows uh, it's at its peak and it's just the i hope this is not the peak <laughs> i hope the peak <laughs> is still away come. from us <laughs> yeah but like very very fast growing thing yes, right yes. lots of folks want to move into it so this not is not just really folks great. moving in i also we also talk with hundreds of companies mm-hmm. uh, on understanding what they need what they want our students to be equipped with correct that's one of the key tasks that we do all of our team actually sits in one on one discussions mm-hmm. like these with industry experts and finding out what they want yeah and i mean the amount of requirement has simply exploded mm-hmm. over the last couple of years now there is a huge spectrum of roles in data science that companies want to fill desperately including our own team at scaler <laughs> right we are we are hiring very aggressively mm-hmm. and we are looking for the best minds to join us right so like you are just trying to upskill the students according to the industry not yes. just a very old school curriculum of data science ml yeah yeah so that's something that i learned very early in my career mm-hmm. a lot of beautiful elegant theory that i learned in in college mm-hmm. was not applicable in the real world and i learned it very quickly thanks to my team at yahoo labs so now we don't want learners to make that mistake so mm-hmm. we go back to the industry we talk to hundreds of actual data scientists hiring managers all the way up to vice presidents mm-hmm. and we ask them what is it that you want and we repeat this survey every 4 5 months mm-hmm. so that we are not lagging behind from what industry needs great, great. it has to be data driven at the end of the day otherwise how can we be data scientists or machine <laughs> learning scientists exactly completely agree and i think really appreciate the vision uh, you are on and i think uh, it will definitely help all the aspiring data professionals uh, lots of people want to move into the data science and uh, like uh, even this is something which is very very popular among the college grads as well right they are exploring these fields so now be the college grads or the entry level freshers or working professionals working in different domains like testing profile software engineers or tpm program managers they also want to move into it 
but the main challenge is how do i transition into the data science because finding the right region and finding the right road map and finding the right resource everything is difficult nowadays so what's your take on that part so first let's answer the question about the reason the reason yeah. right i would i would suggest people don't hop on to a bandwagon just mm -hmm. because it is popular so i would say if you have that curiosity if you like math mm -hmm. or if you have if you want to be a sherlock holmes i call data scientists the sherlock holmes of data mm -hmm. that's because i just i can i can easily get a few gb or few terabytes of data now as a data scientist or a data analyst or a machine learning scientist or a machine learning engineer my job is to make sense out of it yeah. so if you have the mindset of making sense of just raw numbers this is the field for you that should be your reason yeah. that you feel passionate about finding insights from raw data using a bunch of mathematical statistical or machine learning tools or even coding mm -hmm. how you do it come secondary the reason should be that you want to be the sherlock holmes of data exactly. that should be the right reason exactly again if you don't want to be that please don't get into this field this is the wrong field for you mm -hmm. you will not enjoy it number 1 number 2 if you want to get into this field of course you have to learn the tools the the techniques that are used yeah. so there is surely programming mm -hmm. okay so first and foremost you have to know the basics of programming again you don't have to be like a software engineer or a data engineer like you you can know basics of programming you certainly have to know sql basic databases etc most importantly you have to have a strong applied foundation mm -hmm. i'm not saying theoretical i'm saying applied foundation in mathematical topics in the context of machine learning again it's not that you should have a four year degree where you have studied tons of mathematics no mm -hmm. you have to have you have to know basic probability and applied statistics you have to know some linear algebra some calculus what is required for machine learning okay. and then you learn a bunch of machine learning techniques of course most important amongst all this is you have to solve real world problems well, the common mistake that i see lot of people do is they just learn a bunch of equations bunch of libraries but they don't know how to solve a real world problem yeah so that is the key aspect you learn all these tools and solve a bunch of problems and build a strong portfolio of work mm -hmm. that is the core essence that's how you get into data science correct so what we have done on the same end when when we were, when we were designing the whole scalers data science and machine learning program is we said hey let's go to the industry find out what problems they want us to cover in our program yeah and we have tens of case studies we have close to 70 80 case studies today in our program which are actually inspired from problems that are industry partners have told us mm -hmm. and we do very case based so every concept you learn we solve a real world problem with that and that's okay. how you learn when you solve 80 problems that's like having 2 to 3 years of real world experience awesome. in data science <laughs> exactly so we have taken what what we think are the most important and backed by actual data from lot of interviews from industry experts and said let's design a case study driven program at scalar yep yep and i think this is the most practical way to learn anything irrespective of the data science even ML. data engineering yes right? exactly the best like, way is to actually build data pipelines pipelines correct correct and this is great i think uh, this this is something which these guys are also looking for uh, where they can get a environment of practical learning not just something uh, going with the programming and typical uh, data science stuff so this is great and you can let me know in the comment section like uh, if what kind of road map you are following and i would be really interested to just check whether you are on right track or not like whatever shrikant mentioned so that would be good so great now moving on to the next question shrikant uh, since you talked about the portfolio part you mentioned that part and the practical learning case studies so uh, you talked about it but anyone let's say who's new into the data science part so how can they like build a strong portfolio like how to even begin with that what are something they they can explore in order to build those kind of practical projects somehow let's say self made projects and like anything which can uh, just help them to stand out from the crowd in the short listing and the interviews so i would say that for every concept you are learning even mm -hmm. simple libraries like numpy pandas very simple libraries that we use in data science mm -hmm. pick up a data set there is no dearth of data sets today mm -hmm. you can go to platforms like kaggle or there are tons of open source data sets open sourced by some of the world's largest companies mm -hmm. get the data set try to look for insights don't just do data analysis for the sake of doing it mm -hmm. lot of people make this mistake that hey i have some data i have to run some code i'll show some graphs and i'm done no 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 your job is to get the most valuable insights from the data yeah. 
So I would say from the beginning onwards, till the time you do state of the art deep learning models, try and pick up slightly challenging problems. Mm -hmm. And for every concept that you learn, it could be as simple as pandas, numpy or a simple probability concept, try and apply that on a real world data. Okay. And that way, actually, you build the real skills that are needed. For example, if you go to an interview, mm -hmm. very often there is something called scenario based interviews in data science. Right. You're given a real world scenario and you're asked, how do you tackle this problem? Mm -hmm. If you have not done it, it's very hard to think from that framework of mind. Yep. Right. So my suggestion is build a series of portfolios from the simplest ones to state of the art. Mm -hmm. Right. For example, if you're learning deep learning, there are so many publicly available computer vision data sets. Or I would say something much simple. Take 10 of your friends, mm -hmm. click five pictures of theirs in different lighting conditions. Build a simple convolutional neural network, uh, which is which is a deep learning model mm -hmm. to detect whether uh, to do, let's say, I just could give you a new picture. Which of these 10 friends are these? Yeah. This is a very simple model. Simple one, yeah. Like we have, we have learners who have actually taken their car in India. They've recorded the data using webcam mm -hmm. and they've tried to simulate an autonomous car using a simple I-20. Wow. <laughs> so actually we have a case study like that, uh -huh. that we do using US data. Mm -hmm. Now this learner said, hey, I can just grab my data. I just have to put a webcam. <laughs> and he just grabbed this data and I was mentoring this student at Applied Roots. Mm -hmm. And he, he grew phenomenally well because he did something that was non-obvious. Mm -hmm. That was exciting, interesting. And not just for the sake of doing it, but for the actual fun of solving it. Correct. Yeah, I think business crux is also very important to understand, right? Uh, for the sake of doing, just don't do that list. I have created this project and put it in the resume. Lot so, of people do projects to put it in resume, exactly. not to gain insights or learning. Yeah, That's yeah. unfortunate. Yeah, they need to understand this difference, right? I, whether you are prioritizing the short listing or your resume or your actual learnings, because that was something which will uh, be helpful in the longer run. I think in the Three Idiots movie, and somewhere they say that go for excellence, uh -huh. success will anyway come. Exactly that. So same thing here also. I forgot the exact Hindi wording of it. Mm -hmm. So, but but the logic here is you build the best, you solve the problem the best you can. Yeah. Shortlisting hui jayega. Right. It'll be it'll happen eventually. <laughs> Correct. And I think this is the need of the time as well. Like the way interview pattern has changed, right? If you are just stick to your uh, typical skills or let's say just technical deep dive into deep learning or these theories and all, probably you can crack the first screening rounds, first and second technical, but after that it will be more about your practical understanding. Yes. How can you solve the business case studies? And that would be your day-to-day -day activities in the companies as well. Exactly. Like, I do remember my journey in Amazon as well, and that's the best part I learned there. Uh, my manager like uh, kept me pushing for this part. Invest your two, three weeks just to understand the business problem. Yes. Right. Interact with the team. He gave me that free hand. Just deal with this project. Interact with the clients and understand why. The why are you are even solving the problem? Yes, why are you even solving this problem? And whatever they are saying like are we supposed to exactly do the same or we can do it in a different way so this is the main part and i think completely agree with your point just to add to that same on the same thread when you solve a problem always ask yourself if you were solving it at that company as a data scientist mm -hmm. what are the most important things that you will solve for right. who is your customer or who is your client and what are they looking for in this analysis mm -hmm. and try and solve for that Right. Because the whole code part or designing the things won't take much time because the initial phase is very much important. Yes. We're understanding the whole business problem, crux, why you're building it. That is, I think, the whole 50% part of your entire uh, product life cycle. Uh, just to add to that, in our world, we do we spend a lot of time cleaning data cleaning. also, <laughs> yeah. which uh, probably a data engineer might have a different objective. Right. Of course, yeah. understanding the problem is mm -hmm. mandatory. Yeah. So is cleaning, pre-processing that we often overlook as... Mm -hmm. But that's if you don't have clean, solid data, all the models you have built are just garbage. Right, right. Yeah. Again, you guys can let me know in the comment section. You have created projects just for the sake of shortlisting or just to get the actual learnings. Because in my college time, I literally made these mistakes. I copied projects from the GitHub and all showcase in my resume and literally didn't help me out at all. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a fun um, example. During my master's days, uh, in the summer vacation, we were actually solving a very interesting problem, mm -hmm. which is, uh, this was, I think, uh, cricket season. So we said, from the cricket video itself, can we, this was with uh, Professor Chiranjip at the machine learning lab, as a, as a college student, we wanted to automatically extract fours and sixes and automatically create the highlights. Mm -hmm. We just did it for fun. This was just a fun, fun project that a couple of my friends and I were doing. It so happened that when we were interviewing at companies, 
the interviewer was so happy to listen that we did it for fun <laughs> we wanted to create automated highlights mm-hmm. from a cricket match right and the interviewer said cool guys tell me how you solved it mm-hmm. and we would spend almost 40 minutes in interview discussing how we solved it the techniques we used why they worked why they didn't work mm-hmm. and that shows initiative at the end of the day a company wants or a manager wants his team to take initiative to solve problems right and it so happened that what i did in college was super helpful for me for many many years later <laughs> yes this is cool this is cool a very interesting story and the fun part is something which is really really important i think you should enjoy the whole process yes. and why you are building it i think we all are on the same page for that part so shikant i have one more uh, like frequent asked question you can send that is dedicated to our non tech folks or folks who are coming from completely non cs background so again i have seen folks uh, like dominating in this part like the data science ml and majority of people are coming from this background actually non tech and non cs but still there is a like a huge huge number of people who want to move into this data science part and uh, completely coming from non cs they don't have any programming background they find it very very challenging as well that how they can even move into it whether companies uh, will shortlist for uh, the interviews because they are not coming from the cs background and all and uh, she can since you have taught folks as well right you have seen this journey how even companies are recruiting and uh, even in amazon right on the yahoo labs and other companies you would have uh, interviewed the folks as well so uh, based on your experience what would you suggest to them that how gracefully they can move into data science or the data analyst part and if you think there are some myths uh, related to the non cs folks who want to move into it uh, please try to let's break sure, it down sure 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 so i'll tell you both sides i don't want to just paint a very rosy picture i want mm-hmm. to fa- paint a realistic picture first i have worked with students who come from non cs non technical non math non science like bcom or mcom or mba who have no technical background mm-hmm. who have successfully gone into data science careers amazing a lot of them again realistically speaking a lot of them actually become data analysts mm-hmm. and then they work their way up into data scientists that's a typical path there are exceptions mm-hmm. there are people who come from non cs backgrounds non tech backgrounds who become data scientists automatically okay but not a vast majority of them 10 20 maybe 30% of them become that realistically i've seen 30% of people become that a vast majority become data analysts mm-hmm. there are different titles here some of them could become data analysts product analysts there are different variations of it but these analysts actually are still doing data science they crunch data they use statistical techniques mathematical techniques some bit of programming some tools mm-hmm. like tableau sometimes sql to fetch data and they actually create insights out of the data okay. at the end of the day nobody asks you where the insight came from the insight could come from an excel sheet or a shell script or a python script or some spark uh, 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 code that you have written yeah. the insight is the important part so my suggestion is for everybody especially non tech non cs people if you have that sherlock holmes mindset mm-hmm. of trying to find patterns in data trying to find insights in data you should pick the basics of programming you don't have to be an expert software engineer you have to mm-hmm. know basic tools you have to know basic probability statistics and all these are learnable yeah if you learn it from a practical applied standpoint this is not rocket science again i have worked with about about tens of thousands of learners at applied roots and i teach a lot of students at scaler mm-hmm. who are non tech non cs people and they're able to grab probability stats as long as we give real world examples and teach them in the right way yeah and these people many of them will become data analysts or product analysts which have terrific compensations today yeah, yeah. like at scaler and similar startups fast growing startups we give very competitive to uh, entry level software engineer ro- salaries for data analysts because Amazing. we are looking for the best of the best guys here yep now these guys after working as data analyst for a couple for a year or two they can gain more depth of expertise more deeper mathematical concepts become better at programming and they they, they can go from data analyst to data scientist roles mm-hmm. so it is doable but you cannot skip the part of learning the foundational techniques and tools right if you think ki i will learn one library and i'll become no you have to learn the tools that are used you have to know basic probability basic statistics basic mathematical tools and you always have to have that sherlock holmes mindset mm-hmm. ki what is hiding here let me try to figure out what is here 
that in, that if you have that intuitive insight your degree doesn't matter anyway mm-hmm. and i think finding those insights it's a uh, something you are just seeing some picture and visualizing trying to imagine like what is happening behind the scenes and trying to figure it out so this is cool and what are some myths like you have heard from the folks that uh, non cs folks can't do these things if you have uh, I've, those I've kind of things a lot of people say that but it's not true and thankfully these myths are being busted uh-huh. by people who are getting into these roles right. like i've i've spoken to some of our learners who come from completely non cs background mm. and they actually compete with cs folks when it comes to some of the data analysis tasks <laughs> so it's all about how much effort you put in how much how much intuition you are building to solve real world problems mm-hmm. of course let's be also realistic that they have to put in more effort than more a cs effort. guy yes. let's not fool ourselves otherwise exactly a cs guy already knows sql mm-hmm. a cs guy already knows some programming might know a little bit of probability and stats yeah, they have a upper hand they already right. have they they at the at the start of the race itself they are ahead correct so you have to work hard mm-hmm. let's not ignore that fact there is no part. shortcut to hard work you have to work hard but it is very doable again not just to become a data analyst i've also seen some non cs folks become data scientists yeah directly because they've also learned the depth of mathematics because they fell in love with it correct correct see lot of people probably we were not taught mathematics in the right to way mm-hmm. and hence we start hating math in school <laughs> but once you, once it is taught in a proper way like for example when we teach probability and stats we actually take real data from covid vaccination tests mm-hmm. into the classroom we get data from cricket matches into the classroom and people love that yeah how math is applied exactly. on that part exactly and people who have never studied probability and stats they say hey we want more i want to learn more when you teach calculus from an applied standpoint people say the calculus fear is gone mm-hmm. all the fear that they have gotten in the 11th and 12th is gone now <laughs> so it's all about the right perspective of learning and right perspective of teaching especially if you are a teacher you have to teach it the right way if you are mm-hmm. a learner learn it the best way most applied way possible cool and then this is really helpful for all the folks who are watching and belong to the non cs background i think this will be motivating for you guys as well let me in the comments uh, like how are you feeling now after listening to shrikant's word just to add to that one more thing that we have learned from our own audience mm-hmm. is uh, we have, we have just we just launching the data analyst track at scalar okay so we amazing. initially had the data science and machine learning track but we learned from our audience mm-hmm. that there are some audience who are coming from non cs and non tech backgrounds and we thought let's start this whole new track which is a which is sort of like a fast track for them to get into the data science careers mm-hmm. so we saw this again when we talked to companies companies said hey i have 10 data scientist positions i have 30 data analyst positions can you give me people then we said cool what do you want mm-hmm. they gave us a list of topics that they want people to be expert at and we learned it from the industry and we have just we are just about to launch the data analyst track some of our students are already enrolling for it we are starting it from this month onwards great i think this is exclusive information here so we will provide the link in the description for sure these programs and uh, as a non cs let me know in the comment section which one would you prefer the data science in a like uh, at at your start or the data analyst profile which one do you find a bit easy to start with this is the question basically for the folks who are coming from the tier 3 colleges right and uh, i think majority of people are coming from those kind of engineering colleges they are doing good nowadays but still there are folks who feel really demotivated and they have a dream to crack big tech firms like the mang right and amazing product based companies but again the main challenge probably could be the tier 3 college part and uh, especially they are also interested in this data science and machine learning and uh, the challenge could be they are not getting the kind of environment right the way people get in tier one colleges the community and guidance from their seniors like that so uh, again you have mentored these kind of folks as well so it would be really helpful you can guide the audience who are coming from the tier 3 background how they can prepare themselves to uh, move into the companies like mang and especially for the data roles cool so i can i can completely empathize with them as i told you i was the first batch in my btech college mm-hmm. and it's been one hell of a ride for me great right so i've also seen students who come from smaller engineering colleges or smaller science and math colleges mm-hmm. amazon doesn't care right. whether you come from a stanford or whether you come from iit or whether you come from a small college mm-hmm. that's a fundamental thing but also remember i i've been a hiring manager at amazon i can only do maybe a few hundred interviews every year correct so imagine if i am the hiring manager i can only do 200 300 interviews a year mm-hmm. i can't do more than that. i don't have time right 
So what do I end up doing? I end up picking people based on some pedigree or some prior experience. That's a reality because I can't interview 10,000 students. Mm -hmm. But still, companies like like the top fang-like companies or fang or fang-like companies, the aspirational companies as we call them, they are now going and hiring people based on skills that people have. Either skills that people can showcase. Again, there are multiple ways of showcasing skills. Mm -hmm. For example, in the software engineering world, there are all these hackathons, competitions, uh, the f uh, Code Chef, all these platforms Everything. like Interview Bit. Right? Right. Right. Interview Bit is one of our platforms. And again, in our, in our software engineering ecosystem, we have seen people who's, whose college name I've never heard. Mm -hmm. But they've gone to the best of best companies and done phenomenally well. So my point here is build your skills. In the long run, that's the only thing that matters. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you from my own personal experience, I've studied at in the Institute of Science, which is India's one of the top universities. I have batchmates from my college who have not continuously learned from a tier one college. They've not continuously learned and they've lagged behind. Mm -hmm. I've seen people who, whose college name I've never heard of, but we have continuously worked. Imagine if you're working for your career for 10 years, nobody can beat you. Correct. An IIT JE exam or a GATE exam or a CAT exam doesn't define you in the first place. Mm -hmm. So please prepare yourself. Be realistic. Prepare yourself for the long haul. Mm -hmm. Go behind skills. In the long haul, nobody can beat you. Even a Stanford PhD or a Stanford professor can't beat you in the long run. Okay. Number one. Number two, but don't be in a hurry. Some people say, hey, I will work for three months and I want a job at FANG. That's a reality of it. There is so much competition. So my suggestion is give your best, mm -hmm. learn the core skills. For example, in data science, learn basic probability, basic statistics, programming, get your foot in the door first. Again, right now, there are so many very fast growing startups. For example, at Scalar, I don't care which college you come from. Mm -hmm. If you have skills, I'm willing to hire you. And we pay more than bank companies, by the way, <laughs> for entry level roles and also for senior roles. Like I'm telling everybody, we have about 50 data science positions in, my, in our teams right now in Scalar. And we don't care what college you come from. Please bring skills to the table. We have teammates whose college names I don't know. Mm -hmm. And they're being paid more than fang like folks of their own batchmates. Amazing. Because we care about skills. So if you, are, if you come from a small engineering college, get your foot into door for st fast growing startups. Mm -hmm. There is nothing like learning at a startup. Yeah. In a large company, it all becomes too complex. Get your foot into a startup, build things, learn skills. Then sky is the limit. Why do you want to even join Mang? Then go start a startup. <laughs> what the heck are we doing here? Correct, correct. This is very, very motivating. Honestly, like uh, I, I've been through that journey. <laughs> yeah. It's not hypothetical. I, 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 I am the real world example here. No, correctly, correctly. Um, I think this is this is something uh, which you guys need to understand. Like. Uh, that's what in the beginning I said. Uh, nowadays, they are definitely doing really, really great. I, I'm very much active on LinkedIn and every day I see posts, people like, again, uh, those colleges, uh, probably I didn't hear their, their names and folks uh, from that college getting into these man companies and your point is important to listen here that uh, you can start your journeys from a startup. Like this is, these are the best places to learn and start your journey. I have also been into that phase like when I joined Paytm, they were completely into the startup mode, right? People are just standing on our head. So you learn a lot there. And um, I think we also work with about a few hundred companies at Scalar. When I talk with our careers team, they say, Varma, don't worry about the place they come from. Mm -hmm. Get me people with skills. skills. We will get them job. Right. There are like hundreds of startups, fast growing startups, which are competing with Fang like companies. Mm -hmm. And we have like 500, 600 companies. Forget about Fang. These are all startups. Right. I think the number of the number of companies that Scalar graduates will be working at, I think it will easily reach a thousand soon. Mm -hmm. Now, given that scale, our careers team says, don't worry, dude. Don't worry about the college and all that. Get me people with skill. yes, skills. We will get them through. Yep. That because companies matters. want that. Yep. That matters a lot. And uh, the interesting information like data science hirings are open at a Scalar as well. So, oh, yes, free yes. To apply. <laughs> please, please. We are looking for great people of course we do not compromise on skills our bar is a inch above fang like fang companies. Like companies but so is our, comp our compensation, compensation is 10 inches up <laughs> away from fang like companies that's, that's amazing that's amazing cool so now moving to the next question and that is uh, like no one can know everything like any domain uh, nobody can be a probably master of it they can reach some limit of it uh, so again similar question into this data science ml uh, when someone can feel confident that now I'm 
pretty much prepared and uh, yes this is something or uh, i have achieved this much of into the data science ml part right so how much is it so my suggestion is this if you are getting into your first role right mm-hmm. just do a few case studies some basic probability stats some basic machine learning basic computer vision basic nlp mm-hmm. this field is so vast that i will be a, i'll make a fool of myself if i say i know all these fields no this field is moving so fast that i even tell a lot of our students and some of my colleagues that i mentor and i say if we stop learning mm-hmm. and if we stop spending 5 hours a week on continuously learning we become a dinosaur in 5 years in this field that's the speed at which you have to learn <laughs> yeah. so nobody is perfect if you can solve a few real world problems using basic statistical techniques basic ml basic computer vision basic nlp you are ready mm-hmm. go ahead in case you fail in an interview you know you learn what learn. you don't know right that's the key mistakes. who knows everything Correct. even the interviewer doesn't know dude <laughs> that's the reality of it i've been an interviewer in hundreds of interviews <laughs> there are so true. many concepts that i learned from the interviewee because uh-huh. i didn't know this correct i was shocked by how beautifully some interviewees solve the problems uh-huh. so i have been fortunate to have learned from my interviewees exactly and that this is the typical process of even cracking the interviews you will definitely fail in couple of interviews yes. and you will learn actually that yes. what kind of mistakes you won't be repeating uh, in the next companies so this is the best process cool so this is the last question shrikant i have for you and this is again related to the monetary part right and i think this is the main motivational factor for each and every one based on the today's time the requirements and the aggressively companies are hiring and the like this uh, demand and supply part so on an average if someone who is a like entry level fresher into the data science and machine learning so how much average salary they can uh, definitely expect at least in india and that to in good product based companies the yeah. average probably will be skewed because there are large salaries also so let's mm-hmm. talk median median yeah the correct. median salary will be about 11 to 12 lakhs in mm-hmm. india today mm-hmm. the median the lower end of the spectrum will be about 6 lakhs okay the higher end there is no limit don't know. like there is i mean all your fan companies pay about 20 25ish right and we at scaler pay an inch more than that <laughs> or 10 inches more than that so there is lot of demand uh-huh. there is lot of requirement of really good folks that's the catch mm-hmm. so if you are good sky is the limit but realistically speaking a median that we typically observe is 11 to 12 mm-hmm. again i am not i am taking a median of all the people all the people yeah you could be from tier 3 tier 2 tier 1 or stanford mm-hmm. doesn't matter Correct. but this is the median typically that we observe mm-hmm. and i think this is a decent start as well like to yes. just start your journey in the uh, it industry i think i remember my days i started with 5 lakhs per annum right no, my I first was job was 12 lakhs i still remember <laughs> my first that job of the... years back no that that was long back i agree <laughs> okay. i agree again that was a lot of money then <laughs> Right. Uh, but even today a data a good data analyst mm-hmm. can easily get 10 to 11 lakhs right. forget about right. data scientists mm-hmm. at scaler we hire data analysts and we work with hundreds of companies mm-hmm. who say i want a product analyst i ask them what is the comp like 10 to 12 lakhs easily correct and if the person does well we are willing to go above mm-hmm. so they want good people who can take data make sense out of it that's mm-hmm. the key so even for data analysts the compensations are very good today i think with the skills you can double down and just triple of these numbers in just one year and two yeah the sky is the limit one. yes i know data scientists in india who make 4 uh, 5 crores <laughs> exactly. so the sky is the limit great great amazing so all the wonderful insights uh, were in this podcast and i think this will be really really helpful for the audience because uh, on my channel most people come from this data background data engineers analyst non tech non cs so whatever question i prepared these were actually came from them i just uh, included all these things so i think these were pretty well answered and one more important thing uh, so shrikant keeps on taking free master classes on scaler right and here like he will teach some really cool things related to data science and machine learning so if you are interested then feel free to enroll in these free master classes link will be in the description and definitely you'll learn cool things from shrikant so i, ho- I hope it truly helps those people yeah. who are starting their career or the learning journey itself in data science mm-hmm. cool cool and and definitely we want to help more aspiring data professionals so just like this video in big numbers so that we all together can help all the aspiring data professionals and all the important details and 
program links will be in the description do check out the hiring related uh, links also will be there for the data scientist and analyst post and feel free to put your opinions and thoughts related to anything right if you have any query for the shrikant put it into the uh, comment section i'll just convey those messages to him sure and yep i'll see you next time with something cool again related to the data background till then bye bye so that's what i had for you guys in this podcast i'm pretty sure this was really really helpful for all the aspiring data scientists and machine learning engineers if you find it informative make sure to give a like and share it with your friends and also share your thoughts and feedbacks in the comment section and also if you are new to the channel make sure to subscribe the channel and press the notification icon i will see you guys in the next week with another amazing podcast till then just stay safe stay home take care yourself and your family too